Welcome to the Spirit Woke Podcast, podcasting from the beautiful city of Stillwater, the birthplace of Minnesota. Are you going through a spiritual awakening? Do you wish to learn more about continued spiritual growth and want to meet others who are on a similar journey? We hope that this podcast and its community can be a meaningful resource for you. The Spirit Woke Podcast welcomes special guests from around the globe who share personal stories of their awakening journey, along with details of spiritual abilities they've developed along the way. So buckle up and get ready for this exciting episode. And now, here's your host, Adam Dins. Friends, welcome back to the Spirit Woke Podcast. On this episode, the first episode of 2020, how exciting, uh, I am thrilled to welcome uh, an incredibly talented uh, soul to the podcast, and we're going to talk about spirit guides today, and um, and and let me just say her name before we get too far into it, Lonnie Palm. So Lonnie Palm is going to be talking to us about uh, spirit guides, and she's going to talk about her ability to connect with spirit guides in an incredibly special way that allows her to create art and it's beautiful. And if you're, if you're listening to this on like iTunes or, or iHeartRadio or any of the other uh, podcasting platforms, uh, go to spiritwoke.com and you'll find Lonnie's podcast there and go to the page and you can see an example of one of the, uh, of a piece of Lonnie's work. So Lonnie did a spirit guide reading for me, which was incredible. And um, she did a, a painting of the spirit guide, so you can find it on that page. So again, just go to spiritwoke.com, and and if if you don't see Lonnie's episode there, just search for for her name, Lonnie L O N I Palm P A L M. And before we kick off tonight, I just want to tell you if you're into meditation, check out Spiritwoke Meditations. So Spiritwoke Meditations is an album of guided healing meditations recorded by yours truly. Uh, you can purchase the entire album or order each track individually. So check out spiritwoke.com meditate, forward slash meditations. I've got lots of information there. And just a little bit about Lonnie before we kick off. So Lonnie Palm is a psychic medium who specializes in reading, uh, in readings connecting people with their spirit guides. She uses her gift to create one-of-a-kind acrylic paintings around the spirit guides that she sees. Lonnie also creates what she calls goddess paintings, where she paints women as their own inner goddess in a more collaborative process. And those paintings are so beautiful. I've I've seen them on her Facebook page when I when I've stalked her work, and she does uh, incredible stuff. And so, Lonnie, welcome to the Spirit Woke Podcast. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's very great to be here. It's nice, you know. Uh, it's the perfect time of the year to record podcasts because it's like negative 100 outside, yeah. and so nobody wants to go outside anyway. So we just sit inside and record podcasts. Exactly. It's a, it's a great. Yeah, everyone should do it. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, if you're in a nice warm area and you want to be on the uh, on the Spirit Woke podcast, uh, just come up to Minnesota for a while, and um, you know, somewhere between October and, and April, and that's all you're going to want to do is record record podcasts. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Lonnie, I'm thrilled to have you here, and I'm thrilled. You know, spirit guides to me is, you know, I, I've always been fascinated by spirit guides, and you know, my my family. Uh, well, I guess to say my dad's side were definitely not hippy dippies uh, sure. by any means, but yeah. my, my mom's side of the family kind of is a little bit, you know, and. And my mom and my uncle uh, both practice transcendental meditation, or my they my mom used to. My uncle, I think, he still does a little bit. But I remember when I was younger, you know, my mom always used to tell me about her meditation experiences and 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 how she had a, a Native American uh, spirit guide, and she was always just kind of um, she'd always just kind of talk about him. And of course, I didn't know anything about what a spirit guide was. I was really young, yeah. and I kind of forgot about all that stuff. Until later on, when I when I started getting more familiar with um, with spirituality, and and I guess uh, I, I always call it hippy dippy spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and you know, in connecting with my spirit guides through meditation, and you know, we've talked to uh, another uh, fantastic guest about spirit guides. But I've, I've always been like so fascinated by spirit guides. But before we dive into that topic, because we're going to talk a lot about that tonight, um, Lonnie, would you be cool? telling our listeners uh, a little bit about your spiritual awakening experience, you know, maybe what sparked it. Um, and let, let's start there. 
Oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, it's kind of funny because, you know, trying to think about this and trying to figure out what sparked my my sort of spiritual awakening process, it was hard for me to pinpoint. And I think it's because it wasn't like, it wasn't like this big moving experience. It wasn't like I woke up one day and was like, I am spiritually awakened now. Uh, it was, it was um, kind of a, a gradual thing. I think I grew up in an environment where it was really uh, encouraged to be connected to myself, to be connected to the energies that were around me, um, just to be very aware of my surroundings and aware of energy and aware of healing and things of that nature. My mom's also a psychic medium and she's an author and she writes books and she's, you know, just amazing in her own way. And, um, we, I grew up very close with her. So I think, um, she was just an amazing, wonderful person and a great resource to kind of, um, keep me on that track, I guess, of, of those natural abilities. You know, I think we're all kind of born with this openness and this ability to, to connect. And as we get older, you know, we get kind of ingrained in society and what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to think. And I think we sometimes lose some of that, but, um, luckily I was, I was, I didn't have to do that. You know, my mom kind of encouraged me to stay very open and, um, I kind of have had this spiritual awakening process sort of throughout my life. I think I've, I've been awakening kind of this whole time in different ways. <laughs> um, and I kind of think in, in a lot of ways we're all sort of continuously awakening. So, um, but yeah, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a pivotal moment. Like I don't have this, this beautiful dramatic story. It was just sort of a um, kind of a, a gradual, a gradual thing. So I got kind of lucky in that department, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and it's so interesting to hear, uh, you know, our, our different guests' experience because that's that's typically the first question I ask our guests is what, about, tell us about their spiritual awakening experience yeah. because I feel like you know uh, everyone, you know, part of the reason we have the spirit will community is you know when people are going through an awakening process, they can come here and find community, and you know I think it's it's easy to compare your you know what. Uh, your own spiritual awakening to somebody else's and say, you know, like, wow, like, like, you know, like for me, when I went through my experiences, my, my, or or began the spiritual awakening process, I didn't have, you know, the fireworks and I I didn't see a bunch of cool stuff. And, (laughs) and, and so I just, you know, I just went through this intense healing process through meditation uh, over a course of a couple months and I was like, oh man, I'm missing out. Like I didn't experience any of that cool stuff. But <laughs> you know, it's like you talk to other people, and and it's like, oh okay, well you did this and you did that, and it, it, it's kind of cool to kind of see the tapestry of of the different spiritual awakening, uh, you know, processes that are out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some people, yeah. There's there's some really incredible stories that I've heard, and I, I'm kind of I think I'm very blessed to be able to have the experience um, and and the opportunity to connect with people and hearing their stories, kind of in a similar way as you are, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some really incredible awakening stories out there and I'm, I'm always moved and always kind of just astounded and, um, yeah, everyone's different and everyone's unique and, uh, however it works is, is the way that it's meant to be, I guess. Yeah, that's, that, that's the truth. I wonder, I wonder like in your past life lineage, if, um, you've just sort of evolved and awakened over, yeah, over your past lives so that in this life you were kind of just continuing the process of where you were in a previous life. Oh my gosh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> that's that's a great I never thought of it that way. Um wow, that's that's some um, to think on right there. I'll have to kind of ponder that and see if I have any any connections to that because that's definitely an interesting an interesting thought. Yeah, it's really fascinating, you know, how past lives um kind of interweave. We have uh, we had a guest on a couple weeks ago and she's coming back on again. Um uh, I think actually um, the last our last episode of of twenty nineteen Jenny McDaniel who she is a psychic and she is uh, her her specialty is in past life readings and oh, cool yeah so she um, and in fact you can check out her, she has an episode on uh, on the podcast her and a, and a, a dear friend Mandy Elam who are, is also a psychic and and they talk a lot about past life regression or past life readings and past lives and what they are and how they work but she. I, I we were on a, a call once, just you know, talking as two friends, and you know, I, I was I was lamenting to her. I'm like, I'm just so at the time, I was like, I'm so fixated on this mystical experience. Like, I want to have these mystical experiences. Yeah. And, and she goes, Oh well, you know, I, I'm seeing in in your past lives. The reason why that's the case is you are you've been a mystic many times in your past lives, and Whoa. it's so fascinating when like. You know, I've I've had a couple past life readings, and I've also gone through a past life regression with a hypnotherapist, or that that you know, t- 
takes you back through hypnosis and, and you actually see a past life. And it's so fascinating because, you know, like, I don't know, like I always envision past lives as uh, when, when you see one that it's just like watching a movie that you don't really identify with. Because, yes. you know, because, yeah, that's, that's how I always pictured it. Uh, but when I went through, even just whether it was a reading or it was a, um, you know, the regression, I learned so much about my current incarnation um, and why I behave like I behave and maybe some of the lessons that I'm here to learn because many of them were present in my past lives. And uh, it, it's just fascinating to um, how, how all that works together. Oh my gosh. Abs- it's so interesting to see like kind of the continuation of our, our souls isn't like we always kind of like think that it's like, okay, this life was this one thing and we put that in a box and then this life was this other thing and we put that in its own box. And it's, um, I think past life regression is so helpful to kind of acknowledge that we're always on this journey. That's, you know, it's, it's not really linear, but it's, um, kind of a, it's, it's building, it's always kind of growing into something else and every life is connected and every lesson is connected throughout different lifetimes. And, um, our souls are just, they're so, it's so interesting to hear more about it because we're so complicated and at the same time, so simple, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. But it's so fascinating to hear because we're just always on this journey, um, throughout these lifetimes. And yeah, being able to connect with that is such an incredible resource. Yeah. You are so right on about that. No, oh, we could have a whole conversation about past lives. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're not here to talk about past lives. Uh, we're we're <laughs> we're here to talk about um, uh, this. We're, we're here to talk about spirit guides. And yeah. so, you know, Lonnie, tell us in your experience and in, in sort of in your you know what you've come to know about spirit guides. Like, what are they? And you know, how how do they work in our lives? Yeah. Um. So. I've been working with spirit guides, um, I, you know, professionally five years, but really my whole life. I think I just started, that's when I started taking on clients and being like, okay, this is what I do. This is how it works. This is, you know, the whole process. But really, it's it's kind of been a, a gradual thing that I've been doing on and off throughout my life. Um, and from my understanding of working with them, it's they're just basically these energies that decide to kind of follow us through our life. You know, they're here to teach us certain lessons. They're sort of there to be, um, I always kind of joke because that's sort of like we have this little posse that follows us around. And, um, you know, my people will talk to your people is something that I like to say frequently. Because <laughs> it's really how it is. You know, it's kind of like having a publicist and having a manager, but really it's like each guide has its own sort of specific skill set that it brings. And whatever lessons you're meant to be learning in this current lifetime is sort of the guides that you're attracting and, and drawing to you. And, um, you know, through working with them, I found that it's, we always think that there's like these energies that are distant from us and separate from us, but I've always found how close to us they all also end up being like, um, oftentimes we have past lives with them. Sometimes they're ancestors or, or distant relatives or family members or friends. Um, it's really, really intriguing for me to see just who ends up showing up in a reading, um, and from where they're from, you know, I mean, the world is such a big place. And sometimes I, I see energies that aren't always from this realm of existence, which is kind of a treat for me. Cause that doesn't happen very frequently, but, um, yeah, it's really, it's just such an incredible thing to, for me to be able to experience and for me to be able to share with people. So that's why I paint it too, because I can only explain it so much until I'm like, okay, I need to show you <laughs> what I'm seeing. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, when, when you're talking, when I've had people uh, tell me about, you know, or talk to me about my spirit guides, I want to know what, you know, because we're visual, we're visual creatures, right? Like if I can't see what it looks like, I, I don't, like, it's not real to me, you know? Mm-hmm. It's almost like in marketing too, you know, like like when they like when you create a um, a logo or something, um, you know, you, you want to have a face, you know, if, if possible. People recognize faces and 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 um, appearances more than they would say like a logo. There's just something about the face that resonates. It's just part of our our human nature. How do how do spirit guides work with us? So, you know, I've, I, I definitely, um, know personally for me when I, when I, when I want my spirit guides help, you know, I'll ask, you know, and, and, and usually it's not, it's usually when I want something <laughs> or, <laughs> or things aren't going my way. Um, and I guess that's when you would, when you would ask, say for, for uh, the help of a spirit guide, but then, yeah. um, there's also like this concept of like, you know, because that's our. So this is maybe a bit of a loaded question, but you know, in that case, sometimes I feel like that's the ego, like 
hey, reaching out, I need your help, you know, blah, 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 blah. But sure. there's also another part of me that believes that our soul knows when we need help as well, even if our our um, our conscious, our, our, our ego self, our human self doesn't necessarily recognize that. And so I guess my question for you is, A, how, how do spirit guides work? And when we do call on them for help, is it the case that sometimes our soul will call, call out uh, for help without our, say, our conscious, you know, uh, human human body being aware of it? Yes. Um, okay, I'd love to, I could keep rambling on, but I'm going to let you answer the question. <laughs> It's so funny how it works because I feel like, you know, every individual is different. Every spirit guide is different. You know, they're always here for different reasons. You know, we often come in with a main team, I find. And this main team is connected with us through, you know, many lifetimes. And oftentimes their their souls know us and our souls know their souls. And sometimes we're their spirit guides and vice versa. And, you know, I find that every spirit guide has a different skill set that they offer us. So sometimes, you know, I find that if someone's an apprentice, for example, and they're learning a new skill, a spirit guide will step forward and help them through that process. And they're only there to help them with that specific skill set. Um, sometimes guides will step forward and, and help you through very big life lessons that will take you a lifetime to learn. And they're with you your entire lifetime and sometimes multiple lifetimes until you really get that lesson pegged down because that's just what they happen to be really, really skilled at. You know, I always kind of explain spirit guides acting as um, kind of like teachers, you know, like when you graduate junior high school and sometimes you move on to, you know, high school and then you get this new set of teachers. Um, so I always say that we have kind of a main team that's with us and that main team is, you know, has been with us for multiple lifetimes, but we also have some guides that kind of step in and act as more temporary guides. And those are for more sort of, I don't want to say simpler lessons because that sort of makes it seem like it's small and insignificant. It's not. Every lesson that we learn is important for our, our, for our souls to, um, to grasp and to kind of understand and have. Uh, so those temporary guides that step in to help us with specific lessons, um, uh, an example of a temporary guide would be one that helps you through grief. Um, oftentimes those guides can be with us, you know, for however long that grieving process for us personally will last. And, you know, every individual is different. That can be two weeks, that can be 25 years, you know, whatever it is for you. Um, so yeah, I think definitely a part of our human nature and our egos, you know, sort of wants to call them in when we're having you know, a problem because we're like, oh my God, like this one thing is happening. And like, I just need my guides to help me figure it out. Cause I just, I want to get it down. I want to understand it. And I want to move on and I want to be happy. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it, I think our souls are, you know, very, very wise. And sometimes, you know, there's this higher self that sort of knows what we need before we consciously know what we need. I don't really think it's disconnected, but it, it's, it's connected to us, but maybe we don't always consciously know it but there's always a part of ourselves that understands and, and knows when we need that assistance. So um, I totally think that there's like a, a higher self sort of calling that's like, all right, like I'm going through this specific lesson. I'm going to call in my, my spirit guide SWAT team to sort of swoop in and help me figure it out. And then, uh, yeah, it kind of, it could, it gets stuff done for us. Yeah. That's really cool. That's um, it's powerful, you know, and, and, uh, you know, so what do you what do you say to people who 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 come to you and say, I ask my spirit guides for help all the time and I, I just don't seem to get an answer? Oh, OK, I have had this happen before. Um, it's so funny because I think, oh, gosh, I mean, they're always answering us and maybe it's. Oh, gosh, there's different ways of them communicating. You know, sometimes they send us signs and we don't always recognize the signs or know what they mean. Um, so having somebody that, you know, is a reader, whether it's me or someone else, or maybe just sort of developing that skill on your own independently, you know, I always say that you should, you alone should use your own discernment, no matter who you're reading with. Um, but they're always sending us signs and signals and having somebody that kind of can interpret that can always be really helpful and sort of help you recognize what those signs and signals are. Um, sometimes they come to you in dreams. Um, if you're truly convinced that they're not communicating with you, um, I often recommend that sometimes there's some spiritual blocks that we may have. Maybe we have old belief systems that are kind of keeping us from um, receiving that assistance. You know, maybe there's some fear there. Maybe there's some some blocks that we're putting on ourselves, you know, some old old energy, some baggage. Um, sometimes we have guilt for seeing spiritually, which isn't always good. So we want to make sure that we clear that. Um, but yeah, it really depends on the person. There could be a, a number of things that are affecting that, but I always think that our, our guides and the energies that are around us are kind of, they're, they're communicating with us all the time. You know, I mean, the universe is, we're all connected, you know, the stars and each other and energies and, uh, yeah, I guess it's a number of things and it just depends on the person. 
Yeah, it's really interesting that you you bring up the 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 concept of like you know having blockages or or I guess I guess more specifically belief systems, which I think can act as a um, as a block in a lot of ways, you know. And and I've found personally, you know, I coming into the hippy dippy spiritual side of things later on in life, you know, earlier in my life, I you know I, I've I've had quite the evolution, you know, I was, I was born into a Jewish family and my family wasn't uh, religious per se, um, which kind of was, was good in some ways because it allowed me to sort of explore other, other things without feeling like I was, um, you know, like, like, uh, being sacrilege. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I converted to Christianity when I was 17 and I became a hardcore Bible thumper for many years. <laughs> so I was one of those, so okay. um, yeah, and you know, I, I I was one of those, uh, but but sincerely, because I always sought God, you know, like oh, my course. my intention was to find it was to know the truth, you know, I wasn't looking for for something to make me feel better about myself or to be a part of a community. It was really a, I I always had a thirst, you know, to to understand and to know God, and so yeah, I, I became extremely devout, and I and I I truly believed a lot of the things that were being taught. Um, you know, behind from the pulpit, you know, and and what I found, and it, and it's, I think it's still a, uh, I think for me it's still a, a struggle, uh, because you know, even though I I'm, I've gone through this spiritual awakening process and I'm I'm continuing to go through it, and I believe in a lot of these things, and I've even experienced a lot of these things, I still think there are these belief systems that I've carried with me from from. You know those days of just thumping, thumping the good old book that <laughs> <laughs> that keep me from experiencing uh, this spiritual uh, redundant use of the word experience, but experiencing this the spiritual journey fully. So I, you know, it's it's I I understand that comment very yeah. loud and clear. Oh my gosh! And you know, there's there's truth in every religion, and that's the beauty of it. You know, and I I think spirit guides. They, they tend to be more of a, a modern kind of concept. And I think, um, you know, they're, they take place in different religions as well across the world. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's one thing that's kind of cool for me is that I've worked with people of, of all walks of faith and they all have spirit guides. You know, we all have energies and um, just, just beautiful, just beautiful energies that are guiding us throughout our lives, regardless of our belief systems. But um, when it comes to connecting, for sure, there's definitely a sense of like, oh my gosh, like I can't connect with my guides unless I'm, you know, talking to a priest, I'm talking to, you know, somebody who can connect with them for me. But ultimately, you know, we are, we are parts of the universe ourselves. You know, we are parts of the cosmos. Like we connect to ourselves and we can connect to any energy we choose. And um, it's important for us to kind of acknowledge that we don't, we don't distance ourselves too, and that we have, we have the power, you know, to, to connect with energies that are around us. And that's really kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 you know, even, even people who have the belief, even if it's a deep seated subconscious belief that contacting a spirit guide or talking with a a, a medium or a psychic is somehow sinful. And I think that tends to be a really big block for people who are coming out of a, a more, uh, strict denomination of of any religion right that you oh just God. kind of feel like tapping into this energy there's something wrong uh, with it absolutely yeah i've definitely come across that a few times and um you know that's where kind of diving into those belief systems can totally help totally help clear that up yeah so that's powerful so you know i think you know those of you guys listening in who have come from other other, you know, religions or faiths that, you know, this was, um, you know, it's kind of taboo to, to explore this type of thing. Um, definitely interesting to sit with because if maybe if, if you're feeling like you can't connect with your guides, um, in, in the way that you want to, or other areas of spirituality, it could very well be that there are some, you know, some of those, some of those belief systems. Uh, I know I still have some of them that need to be, they're not fully ironed out yet. You know, we're human beings, you know, we're, we're not perfect and we all have belief systems and we're all kind of on this path of healing and growth. And I think as long as we're kind of aware and, and working towards it, that's all that matters. You know, no one's going to be like tomorrow, like we're going to be like, oh, all my beliefs are, are completely cleared. <laughs> um, it's definitely a gradual process. Yeah. And it's part of what makes the, the journey so interesting. 
I think the second guest on our our Spirit Woke podcast, he was a good, he's one of my dearest friends from high school, but he's now a brain doctor. He's an MD and Whoa. yeah, really smart guy. And he he has a really interesting story. His name is Doctor Elias Druckmann, and like me, he was born into a Jewish family and he converted to Islam. And oh. yeah, and and I, I I believe like through his journey in Islam, he started uh, he came across sort of the the mystical side because. You know, and I, I share this story because he was he was sharing with me that almost every religion, and this goes to your point that how you know there's a lot of truth in all religions, right? Yeah. Um, so his his perspective, and it's not perspective; it's it's the truth, is that you know almost every religion there's Christian mystics, there's Jewish mystics, there's uh, Islamic mystics, there's you know every ancient um, religion. Has some level of mysticism, and a lot of those the the and and all, that mysticism comes from experience, uh, mystical experiences, and they're so common. Like, or I shouldn't say they're they're so common, but they they all have so much in common. All the mystical uh, belief systems from across all of the religions. Absolutely, and you know, I think even on my own, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm I'm not a I wouldn't call myself a mystic or anything like that. But just th- through my own research, my own kind of experience, the more that I learn about spirit guides, and the more that I learn about spirituality, the more that I discover that at the end of the day, it's, we're so connected. And there's so much commonality between everything. Everything is really kind of, it, it's all kind of achieving or trying to achieve the same goal, which I think is just incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. H- have you read any of Alan Watts's material? You know what? I have not. And that's not the first time someone's recommended it to me. I think I have to actually like dive in and start reading that. Yeah, there's actually a, a really great book. Um, it's an audio book and, and I'm opening, I'm cheating. I'm opening up my Audible as I'm, <laughs> I'm speaking to you now. But I'm looking at my, my library because um, uh, just because I, th- the title of the book's a little bit long. Um, okay. uh, I guess maybe it's not a little bit long. It's called Out of Your Mind, <laughs> <laughs> and it's Alan Watts, and it's it's basically like thirteen of his lectures. It basically covers everything in his library, which is is really cool. But he's got this really cool, and it's not just his philosophy. There are a lot of um, spiritual philosophers and and ancient or not ancient religions, but but you know Buddhists and and various other sorts that believe. And Alan talks a lot about this in his his lectures that um, that we are the universe experiencing itself, and oh, I love and in fa- yeah, and in fact, uh, well, I love the way he talks about it because he essentially says that the universe, that that source energy, that you know whatever we we refer to to God as, um, you know, for me, I, I don't mind saying the word God, but um, yeah. but essentially, it's the universe playing hide and seek with itself, so. It's this game of play where when uh, it, the universe incarnates as us as humans, and we're all the same because we're all that fabric of, of God, of the universe, incarnated in this physical form, or as an animal, or as a plant, or as whatever. It's it's all consciousness. Yeah. And the universe incarnates as us, and then it forgets that it incarnated as us. <laughs> So it hides. It's hiding from itself. So it can experience life as as Lonnie Palm, as Adam Dintz, as you know, Scrappy the Boston Terrier, right? And <laughs> yeah. and just experiencing all of these these things. And then when it's ready to awaken, it does. And we go back and we come back again. And it's this beautiful, like, um, it's it there's so much beauty in that. And I love that concept of of just being uh, you know, as you say, we're all so connected because we're we're all made out of the same fabric. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I'll definitely have to read this book because that's so um, kind of in alignment with what I what I feel and what I've kind of been thinking for so long. And I, I'll have to definitely see more of his research and uh, expand on that. Yeah, you and I, we should talk offline a little bit too sometime about um, about sacred medicines as well because there are some pretty amazing experiences of feeling that. Uh, oneness and experiencing oh. that oneness with sacred medicine. So um, we should talk about that sometime. It's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I know everyone listening is like, no, talk about that now. <laughs> but we're we're not here to talk about that now. We're, we're here to talk about spirit guides. So, <laughs> so, so Lonnie, uh, again, I, I mentioned earlier that you know, and you've mentioned that you're you're able to to you know 
see, not just communicate with our, our spirit guides, but see our spirit guides. And, yeah. um, and I can share that, you know, obviously you're, 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 you connected with two of my spirit guides in our, 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 in my reading. And then, uh, I, I'm anxiously awaiting to, to, to post the, um, the acrylic that you did, but it's, it, it's just incredible to me, um, your ability. And so, um, I, how did, how did you like, like, did you, did you paint before, um, were you a, a talented artist before you painted spirit guides or like, did you talk, talk to us a little bit about that whole process and like, oh how did it God. come that you started painting spirit guides? Thank you for the compliment. Um, uh, I, well, it's, you know, it's funny how it sort of happened. It really kind of just fell into my lap. Uh, I have been painting my whole life. Um, my mom kind of likes to joke. She says she gave me a paintbrush when I was two and she, I never put it down. <laughs> I think she kind of just like sat me down one day and was like, all right, like, we're just gonna, we're gonna try this out and like sit you down in front of some canvas and, and try to find you like a little hobby. And then, um, some, for some reason I just fell in love with it. And I never, I never stopped. Um, painting and art has always been a part of my life and it's always been something that, um, it's sort of the way that I express my own soul, you know, and my own kind of emotions and my own, my own journey. And, um, I sort of stumbled upon painting spirit guides when I was, oh my gosh, I think I had just graduated high school and, uh, my mom was kind of hosting a class and, and she teaches classes and, you know, she writes books and she has all these kinds of like wonderful, amazing things. And, um, she was teaching a class and, um, I was assisting in one of her classes cause that was something that I sort of did on the weekends, you know, for fun and just to kind of help out and, you know, be around the energy. And, um, I was her assistant one weekend and I was doing a spirit guide reading in class. And, um, the woman just was so moved by this reading. She loved it so much. And she happened to see my art and was like, you know what, can you, can you paint this? me can you can you make that so I can see it because I want to see it which is like I can see it so vividly in my mind but I want to be able to like hold on to it and have something where I can you know have as a memory I can capture this I can hang it on my wall I can I can revisit this experience and remember what it means to me and um kind of have that connection to my spirit guide um much more easily without having to sit down and meditate and then remember like you can just look at this piece of paper and this this painting and be like yeah that's my guide right there um, and, uh, I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> of course, like, you know, just out of high school thinking like I'm painting for somebody like feeling like a, a fancy artist, like someone just commissioned me to paint a, paint an, a piece of work for <laughs> So it was, uh, it was very flattering. And, um, that's kind of how I started off, I guess, you know, and then other people in class heard about it. And then, you know, a few of my mom's friends had heard about it. And then, you know, she sat me down one day and was like, okay, you should, you should do this. You should pursue this. And I was really resistant at first, actually. It's funny when I tell the story because I was so, I was so resistant. I, I wanted to be like, but mom, like my friends aren't doing this. Like, this isn't like a cool thing, you know? And, um, I guess over time it's funny cause I really, I grew to love it and I, I saw how much it helped people and how great I felt afterwards too. It's really such a gift for me to be able to share what I see with other people and then also help them connect to their own spirit guides. And that's something I always say too, like it's, you don't need me to connect to your spirit guides. I think that I'm a great, you know, if you're not really good at being able to see it, I'm a great like facilitator to sort of help you get there. But ultimately what I want you to be doing is connecting with them as well. You know, it's, it's your team. I want you to be able to see them and connect with them. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was kind of my journey of, of learning how to paint them and, and see them. And uh, it really, it kind of just, I guess it was one of those things that was meant to be, but uh, I've learned how to embrace it over the years for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can only imagine, um, and uh, and I'm sure it feels great to see the the difference that you know that your gifts are are you know make in people's lives because you know it 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 it, it really does. I mean, it, I don't know, like being on the other side of it, how you feel, you know, because you're the giver, but you know, for those of us that um, are able to experience that I mean it, it definitely is it, it's very a hopeful thing right it gives it gives it gives you hope that there's more to this this life than just the you know what we see in front of us absolutely yeah and I always say this too and I think people are kind of like oh really is it though and I'm like genuinely it's such a gift for me I don't know if it's just being able to connect with the energy myself and um seeing how it affects other people of course that's a, an amazing gift but um just kind of tapping into that and, and and feeling that energy I mean it is kind of connecting to that source energy whether you want to call it God or the universe or you know whatever name you call it it's that that bigger consciousness you know so it's it's always a treat for me and 
Um, every reading is different. And I feel like every person that I help also helps me. I feel like I'm also kind of learning vicariously through the people that I'm looking for. So I, I also get the benefits. So um, not to, not to kind of, you know, toot my own horn or anything, but it's, it's, that's an amazing thing for me to also be able to experience that. So I'm always very grateful. Very grateful. So you were kind of talking about this in, in, in your last, uh, in what you were just sharing with us, but so, you know, I think it is important for people to learn how to connect with spirit guides. And, um, you know, there, I know when I first kind of came into my spiritual, um, started coming into my, uh, you know, well, let me just say started on a spiritual journey. You know, I really wanted to learn how to connect with my spirit guides and, but, you know, and, and even still today, I haven't fully developed my psychic abilities. You know, when I, when I'm, when I'm facilitating a Reiki, a Reiki healing uh, for somebody, you know, I, I will get some things that come through, but I'm, I'm by no means, you know, like you or your mom or any of the other gifted uh, psychics that are out there. And I always felt like, because I haven't de- developed those abilities that I'm not going to be able to connect with my my guides, like, you know, you or, or, or others with, with your gift. So do you, do you have any recommendations for, for people who are listening in who haven't developed these types of psychic uh, abilities? How, how can they connect with their spirit guides? You know, it's kind of funny you say that too, because I, I feel like we, we come into this world so open. And then as we kind of get older and like go through the process of, you know, being in society and what society tells you, we were always, not all of us, of course, but a lot of us kind of closed down a little bit. Um, and I think that's always there. That always stays with us. It's just learning how to tap into that. And I think everyone's trying so hard too. We're always trying to like, oh, I need to develop and I need to work on it. And I have to like work it like a muscle. And it's funny because it's it's almost one of the easiest things in the world. It's really just releasing. It's almost like meditation. You know, people are always trying to meditate and it's like, you don't try to meditate. You just meditate. It's You just be, you just like exist. And um, at least that's been my experience and that's what's sort of helped me connect, you know, working with spirit guides. It's, I kind of just sit down and I open my energy and I, I look for what's there and I say what I see and I just let it come to me. Um, one thing that I can definitely recommend for helping with this, especially when it comes to like visualization, um, I would say is, you know, meditation has been something that helps me kind of tap in. Um, I think that's something that sort of across the board is going to help a lot of different people. Um, but also kind of knowing what your signs and signals are too, you know, maybe requesting from your guides, like, Hey, like, can I request, I want to see a bumblebee, you know, something simple, you know, um, a bumblebee is a great one, um, where they can sort of send it to you just as validation that they're listening and that they're, they're there for you. But, um, yeah, yeah. Just, and, and just being open and present, you know, being present to something that's extremely important because I find that so many so many amazing experiences happen when you're just sort of in the flow. And I think it helps for them to kind of connect in that way too. We're not trying to control the situation or we're not trying to force it. We're not like, you know, trying to call them on, on their end. It's, it's literally just keeping the line open and allowing them to speak with us when they need to. So you mentioned opening, you like to open your, open up your energy. What is, what does that mean? Um, Oh gosh, how do I explain this? Okay. Um, opening energy. So really just, you know, kind of, I think over time, a lot of people that I've worked with anyways have um, expressed to me that they feel like they have these walls that they've sort of built up and, you know, walls of protection, especially with spirituality. I think spirituality is such a sensitive topic um, and such a personal topic as well. You know, it's something that we hold very near and dear to our heart. Um, I think just, you know, opening up that energy and, and sort of dropping those walls and allowing yourself to just kind of you know, be in, be in the moment, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, I, I, I think it absolutely makes sense. And I think, you know, um, I think that's definitely, I think that that kind of goes along with what you, um, said a little bit earlier about blocks. Yes. Oh gosh. Blocks and, and old belief patterns and, um, old programs. Those are that's actually a great, a great way to explain it because, you know, those are definitely things that can sort of hold us back. You know, it can be belief systems from ancestors, from this lifetime, um, from previous lifetimes, anything like that. 
Um, it's sort of just like clutter on a hard drive. You know, when you have, when you haven't emptied that trash bin in a while, it starts to get full and it starts making your computer a bit slow. <laughs> uh, we want to delete those old programs and, and clear up that space so that we can have that, that fresh memory for us to start restoring and, um, putting in some, some better stuff, some better, better belief systems and more positive things that can help us in our journeys. Yeah. It, it, it's so interesting. You know, I, I had an experience on, um, and, and this is the only way I, I know this, but I had this experience on sacred medicine where um, I had, I literally experienced all of the 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 layers of the proverbial onion kind of just peel off, and whatever that was there was just the core of who I am as a spirit, as oh, a wow. yeah, as a soul, and consciously I experienced what that felt like, and yeah. It, you know, and 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 from that, you know, it was it was interesting because I was able to juxtapose like how I normally am versus how I was in 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 that in those moments. And it's interesting because we don't we don't realize on a day to day basis just how much crap we carry around, you know, and that we we have these layers that we've built up over over time, like film, like just this film that just covers us and wraps us and makes it really hard for us to experience life the way we would if those layers were gone and we were just our pure sort of soul self, our, you know, our, our just our energy, our energetic being just there. And um, it was really interesting because it's like, wow, like, oh my God, like, A, this experience is amazing, but B, do I have some work I need to do to kind <laughs> of get to a place where I, I, I can feel like this all of the time? And maybe... You know, and maybe it's not about feeling like that all of the time, but you know, we talk about blocks and we talk about limiting beliefs and limiting things. It's so, it, you know, it was just a really eye-opening experience, and and sometimes it's hard to to really sort of understand what that is if you haven't experienced what it's like to be without it, you know. And so, um, but that's no joke. That's really no joke. It, there, there's a lot of work that needs to be in a, a lot of case that needs to be done. And so I love, I love what you said about asking for a sign because I feel like that can be sometimes the crack in the door for, for people to kind of start letting go is to, to experience something, right? Because it's kind of like, um, you know, Oh, I don't want to eat that food because it's gross. Right. Like, yeah. like sushi, like, Ugh, I don't want to eat sushi fish. I'm going to eat fish. And then you taste it once, you're like, oh, you know what? That wasn't as bad as I, I made it out to be. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have it again. And so yeah. I love you. That's a terrible analogy, but I love your your uh, you know point on. So if you're asking for a sign, right, yeah. do you recommend asking for something that is really obscure? Or, you know, because like if I, and this is an extreme, but if I'm like, okay, spirit guide, I want you to show me a pink elephant. That's how, you know, that's how I'm going to know that you're listening to me. And like the odds on me ever seeing a pink elephant walk in front of a car, granted may I, I may see it, you know, at a store or something, a pink stuffed elephant, but it, it, it's definitely maybe not as common as saying in your example of seeing the, the bumblebee. Right. So sure. like, is there like a level like, and I know I'm getting really granular here, but like, what would you recommend in terms of a sign? Like, is there, cause you want it to happen, right? You don't want to ask for yeah. something that's just so obscure. You'll never see it, but, or maybe you do, I don't know. That's a really interesting question because I, I hadn't really thought of it that way. I always kind of recommend more common signs because I feel like it's easier for, you know, if it's if it's more frequent, it's easier for a spirit guide to send it to you. And it can happen in any way. You know, it can be on a greeting card. It can be on someone's T-shirt. It can be someone's name. Um, maybe someone's named B, you know, and, and they happen to talk to you and they say, hi, my name is B. And you're like, oh, my gosh, B, that's my sign that I've been looking for. You know, so things like that have happened to me in the past. Um, but something obscure, too, you know. I think people try to make it so obscure because they're sometimes, you know, it depends on the person, but sometimes they're like, you know, it needs to be this specific thing exactly, or it's not real. Um, and I think that's where it kind of becomes a problem because a big part of them being able to communicate to us is through us sort of having that trust and having that faith that it is meant for us. Um, something that happened to me recently, actually, it's funny because I was asking for a sign myself, believe it or not. Um, I have a friend of mine that I, I had some questions about and I, kind of needed some guidance with a situation. And I was like, all right, well, we have this song and this song is called Wonderwall. And if I hear that song, I will, I'll give them a call and check in on them. 
and I'm waiting, you know, of course my ears are open and I'm, I'm flipping through radio stations in the car and <laughs> I'm like, I'm almost like looking for it. Right. Cause I like, I, I kind of want to hear the song and I'm like, okay, was that the song? No, that wasn't it. Okay. It's fine. You know? And then every time I, you know, turn on the music in my house, I'll turn on Pandora and I'm like, was that the song? And you know, whatever. Um, finally it's out of my mind. It's been a few weeks. I'm like, all right, clearly I'm not going to hear it. It's not meant to be. Um, I've let it go. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not searching for it. I'm not pushing the energy. Um, I, so I go to a, a restaurant with my friend of mine and we end up getting some fancy drinks and, uh, on the menu, um, one of the drinks that I'm looking at, and I'm not reading the names of the drinks. I'm just trying to figure out what's in them. Cause I'm like, all right, that sounds yummy. Mm, that sounds fancy. Like chocolate. What? I'm definitely going to drink that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the name of one of them was here's Wonderwall. And it took me a minute. And then I literally, my jaw just dropped. And I was like, that was for me. That was my sign. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it on the radio, but like the names of the drinks were so random. That was the only one that was named after a song. Um, and, and such a, a random song for me personally, cause I don't, you know, hear that song very often. Um, and that was a sign, you know? So I, I think it's really subjective to the person and, and you have to be kind of open to it. You know, you can't force it. You can't push it. Um, and trying to put it in a box and trying to make sense of it too is kind of an issue um, in the long run. So I think just kind of putting it out to the universe, saying if it's meant to be, it'll be. And if you get that sign, then that's that's what it's meant to be. That's really cool. And by the way, Wonderwall is a, a damn cool song. One of my favorites. <laughs> it's a good yeah. Way. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 there's been many times in the car where I've almost lost my voice singing along to it. Ah, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so it's probably the most important question is, did you order the Wonder Wall? I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and was it good? That's like, was it, was it as good as the song? And it was it in a drink form? Oh, gosh. I don't think it was as good. I don't think anything's as good as that song, honestly. But it was, it was pretty close. It was pretty dang close. I'm not going to lie. It was, an, it was a good drink. <laughs> <sighs> well, you know, this has been such a, uh, an awesome conversation and... Um, I feel like we've we've really covered a lot, and we've talked about spirit guides and and mm-hmm. um, you know spirit guides. Uh, there's so much more we could we could talk about. You know, we could talk about animal guides and different forms of spirit guides that exist in totems and all that good stuff. But maybe sure. maybe at some point we'll come back and do a a, a part two, or we'll talk about something else. But um, but Lonnie, I, I want to ask you before before we uh, head out, it's hard to believe we've been talking almost 50 minutes already, but um, <laughs> is there anything you would like to promote and share with our audience? Like, what are you up to? What do, what do you've got going on? What and any, any offers you want to put out there to those listening in? The, the, the mic is yours. Um, well, this is going to be going up uh, January. Is that correct? In January, January, whatever the first um, Wednesday of January is. So maybe okay. the third or fourth. Okay, cool. Um, well, I'm doing spirit guides and spirit guide paintings, um, readings and paintings, as always. That's something that I'm always kind of doing. Um, something that's sort of a newer venture for me is goddess paintings, which it's more, it's a little bit more of a, a process, a collaborative process when it comes to creation, because what I'm doing is I'm connecting with women um, or men. I haven't worked with any men yet, but it could be God paintings or goddess, whatever it is, whatever you feel you want me to paint for you, I am totally down for it. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm connecting with your kind of your energy and how you view yourself in the best light. So um, primarily so far I've worked with women who want to see themselves as these amazing, strong, confident figures and um, just see themselves as these amazing goddesses that they already are in real life, but have it kind of in a painting form where they can look at that and be like, yeah, that's me. Like I'm kind of awesome. Like I am a cool person and I, I'm, I'm tough and I'm strong and I'm beautiful and I'm confident and I'm all these amazing things. And, it's just kind of a reminder to like see that and remember that that's who you are inside, you know? Um, so I get to have the opportunity to paint these women in, in these ways where I get to actually paint them as goddesses, which is cool. And whatever that means to you, you know, I've done kind of a mermaidy one so far. Um, I did one with a moon um, and it's this beautiful kind of snow scene. And I'm actually working on one right now. Uh, that's going to have like a raven in the background. And, you know, it's it's very um, individualized to the person that I'm working with, which is kind of a cool experience for me because I'm always painting something very unique and very different to the person. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's something that I'm doing right now. But I think that's that's pretty much it as far as any special offers or special things that I'm working on. 
So how would someone get a hold of you if they would like to schedule a uh, painting or a reading? How, how, how does someone find you? Yeah, um, well, so far it's been through Facebook, um, but I can also do email. Um, I like to have things written down because yeah, I'm, as much as I, I'm a reader and I'm an artist, which means I'm always kind of like in and out. So if I don't have it written down in front of me, I, there's a good chance that I'm not going to remember. <laughs> so having it written down in an email, I can always kind of like reflect upon it and then write it down in, in my notes and then make sure that everything stays a little bit more organized and more grounded on my end. Um, so yeah, email and Facebook, those are, those are great ways to contact me. Okay, cool. And so uh, just to force all of you who are listening to this podcast to go to uh, Lonnie's web uh, uh, or to the Lonnie's podcast page on spiritwoke.com, I'm going to put her email address and her Facebook address and her website address on the page. So the only way you're going to find it is, well, I guess you could search Facebook, but that would be cheating. So, <laughs> so go to spiritwoke.com. And if you're not, if, if you don't see Lonnie Palms episode on the homepage, just search for her name, you'll find it and you'll find all of her contact information. You'll see an example of the spirit guide painting that uh, Lonnie did for me. And uh, you'll be able to access again, this podcast episode anytime you want, you'll have a direct link to it. And so I guess that's, a, that's about it. So Lonnie, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for for joining us on the on this episode of the Spirit Woke Podcast. Absolutely! Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. This is such a blast. Yeah, this is way too much fun, and I I hope uh, I, I hope 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 that we get to do this again in the near future. Oh, for sure, I'm totally down. Awesome! All right, everyone. Well, until we speak again, be well, and I look forward to. Uh, connecting on the next spirit woke podcast go find us on facebook we're there too so facebook.com forward slash official spirit woke and we will talk next time be well y'all thanks for listening to the spirit woke podcast if you've enjoyed this episode Please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to check out our website, spiritwoke.com, and connect with the Spirit Woke community on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Spirit Woke. Join us next time for another edition of the Spirit Woke Podcast. Namaste. Namaste.